Hello, I am Radagast, at your service. So, uh, true vision of peace, some clarity. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to call it an update, because I don't really think it's an update. It's really about uh, clarifying things. And I want to do this um, as a follow-up, bec uh, because we had the Yes Ladies videos uh, that I put up yesterday or two days ago. And there might have been some confusion, understandably, that um, we might have been promoting the Yes Ladies, other than, although I, I was hoping that in my explanation of the video it was kind of clear that we, we gave this new found uh, grouping um, a platform, because they just got back from China. Um, Charla has met with the Red Dragon and on their last visit, so it just seemed like a good a good neighborly thing to do um let people make what they will um some people did enjoy i guess a lot of people actually enjoyed it and uh certain people f certainly found mary beth the grandmother quite charming uh so that was again allowing people to speak their inspiration but the true vision of peace um, that the that was announced a couple of weeks ago and we have our website true vision of peace and you can subscribe there and that subscription will then be ways we can get um, information out to you quickly as it starts because once it starts it'll there'll be a lot of quick developments but true vision of peace is a dedicated crew working closely uh, you know working with the ambassador and we're um, we're really a separate we're a separate entity in a way from the Red Dragons Gideonites. They're, the Gideonite is a spiritual, a purely kind of you know Christian spiritual movement, um, which is in, is finding purpose for many people who I, who find their faith through Jesus. So this is a very good vehicle. This includes huge parts of South America, by the way. So um, there's a real, part, there's, there's a, a very large, um, I would say, representation in South America with the Gideonites. Um, but they are a worldwide, they are a worldwide group. But there's a lot of Catholics, or Jesus believers, in in South America. Um, that are seem to be a, a very embracing the movement. And then we have the True Vision of Peace, which is a spirit, which is also spiritual. But it's um, it's interfaith, and connected with that interface, interfaith, interfaith, um, an old title of mine has been re resurrected. I am an ordained minister. I'm an ordained interfaith minister, Association of Interfaith Ministers, and uh, was ordained in Saint John the Divine Cathedral in Manhattan, and that was back in 1992, and I have done weddings. And I've done some really good, one, really interesting ones. The, my first one was outdoors between two 80-foot spruce trees, and then a reception was outdoors. And I had gotten the band that played at the at the wedding, and even got up and did a song or two. And I remember it was a beautiful moonlit night. Even driving home, I was a couple of times I could turn off my headlights while I drove, because I could actually see the road because the moon was so bright. It was a very magical night. And then I've done weddings by by waterfalls. And my favorite was in uh, a limestone cave called the Widow Jane Cave that was electrified and um, they had tables and straw bales to sit on. And there was a little pond in, this, in the deepest part of, the, of this cave, which wasn't huge, but it was all you know, limestone pillars holding it up. It was really quite uh, atmospheric. And um, I had my back to the pond and the bride and groom and the best man and best lady, they were facing the pond. So that was pretty magical. But anyway, um, because we, um, a big, a part of True Vision of Peace, I should say a big part, but an, you know, a part of it is reaching out to um, other religions, those who, who are looking to, for a common goal, uh, to work, finding ways to work together. So it seemed that um, being as we would be dealing with these as we move on and, and this, this uh, the True Vision of Peace mission grows, um, there, my being a reverend will have some utility um, as, I guess, a title that might mean something to other people in, in the um, 
in their faiths and um, just provide a, uh, a kind of a, you know, a little bit of a liaisoning there. So, um, so that's a little new, Reverend Radagast. And I have been Reverend Radagast since 1992. Um, so, but the, I would like to really get on with one, probably the biggest part of True Vision of Peace coming out, and there seems to be some misunderstanding about it, is the seminars that uh, Gwen Caldwell will be, will be giving, starting um, with her first online seminar on uh, March the 7th. And you can get details for that at True Vision of Peace. I will put a um, I will put a, a link with with my video when I put when I post it and it's this there's some I mean most people are very are really receiving it well because there's no travel expenses there's no hotel expenses no eating expenses it's just a fifty dollar online fee and um, the given that a big part of this funding is through business plans many people myself included do not know how to write a business plan and if you were to go to anyone to write a business plan not only would it be not specific to the cause it would be just your one of the generic you know impress a corporation type business plan um, it but the amount of money that you would pay somebody to craft a business plan for you and then the follow-up which Gwen is offering with her plan. Her plan at $50 um, is an absolute giveaway for the kind of instruction that the average person doesn't have. And the follow-up is something, again, it's, this is not the clock is ticking, oh, you called, you called me, well, that's extra. No, this is all part of it. This is practically a giveaway. And it also helps, it also helps us with, um, well, it helps Gwen, because she is we do, we're all dedicating our time to True Vision of Peace. This is a way of getting some of um, a funding. And of course, the question might always come up, well, you know, if there's all this money as around, why, why do you need to self-fund? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Part of this is actually self-empowerment for ourselves. And um, coming, to the, coming to the True Vision of Peace, not as needy people looking for a handout, but people looking for a mission for a job to do and even if have to, we have to pull some money out of our pockets that for what we're going to set up and what's going to come available from those efforts is well within uh, what we want to do for ourselves and for humanity. <clears throat> so the, um, I, I, if you're interested, if you have tr really ideas for helping humanity, this first um, um, Gwen Caldwell seminar is one you would like to attend. Um, apparently, it's it's I think has a limit of eighty, and then there will be one, then she'll have a real um, you know press the flesh one. Um, uh, like well, let me call that up so I don't have to mess it up. Then she'll have one in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, and that class limit is fifty, but that's one hundred twenty-five dollars, and um, and I just let me kind of give you a quick readout. Like I'll do of the one that's the seventh, the online class. Um, you know, starting at nine o'clock, there'll be an opening meet and greet. Then there'll be a welcome by the ambassador, and then at ten o'clock, there are things like moving into the new paradigm, what it means, how to get there, abundance, gratitude, action and intention. Twelve o'clock is a break for lunch, and then at one o'clock, business plans and project proposals, and then that that's two hours, and then at three o'clock, the ambassador takes questions. And you know it's a live interaction with the ambassador, and then closing statements, and cost includes workshop and online follow-up support meetings. I mean, this is a, this is an amazing um, outpouring of of Gwen's love because of what she's doing here. So um, so again, these these fees are very nominal. A big part again is to help us fund ourselves, and also we're building. We're gonna have a little project of our own that. Uh, we're putting together and um, that will create greatness. Um, you know, it's the, I, I mentioned about building reservoirs for, uh, for deliveries um, in an earlier video of mine. And I guess I'll just leave it at that um, about funding for a reservoir. Uh, so create, you know, it's creating a, cha a, a channel. It's really, an, and this is an agreement between all of the, the True Vision of Peace members that this is, 
how we get our own credibility and um, self-empowerment and our own equity uh, as just as far as like who being being able to stand in my own integrity knowing that I didn't just show up to be a part of a money transmission but showed up to prepare the the groundwork psychologically for what is coming ahead um, there's a real sense of honor and dedication on on every member of uh, the true vision of peace self you know a lot of self assignment of of um, what needs to be done according to skills uh, I just recently wrote our first newsletter came out on March 1st and that'll be ongoing I, I will be writing the newsletter and, and let's see so yes yeah, setting or getting humanity free is a psychological battle um, and that's where the baby steps are come in I, I mean I still see in places I mean even little places like the forum where um, any any kind of not being able to hold one's own in a conversation which happens a lot with me um, people going to their the daddy or mommy of a given site and protect me from that from that um, man with all those words and so what what you have is a case where people who are saying they're ready to self-govern the moment they can't hold their own and once again in a, just a discussion they want to run to a, a, an authority figure to intercede and that's not self-governing at any level to not be you know to run to somebody to basically say that person is being mean to me because every time I try to make my point they show me that there's not much of a point being made and I'm very frustrated because I don't have another point to make um, but so they, we're really talking about a psychological preparation for a world of abundance and no lack and cooperation and um, a tolerance for other views and finding out how we all work together so it is it is the baby steps um, of of the preparation uh, for people I mean uh, the even the ambassador I guess has made the case where again if a huge amount of funds were suddenly to show up in the mindset that we have now and especially even with the jobs that many people have now I mean if suddenly everybody has so much money they didn't need to work who would fix your car who would come and unclog your toilet um, who would do repairs on your house I mean if nobody if suddenly people really had a, had a lot of cash everybody would have put out a gone fishing sign and they probably would be on their little yachts fishing and getting drunk um, there, there is, um, and that's why the when I mentioned before about we have an, a case of a sense of honor and dedication. That honor and dedication is something that uh, we really want to get across to everybody to understand that to live free is to also understand we have responsibilities to society. And if um, if what you did bef when you were hurting was to repair toilets. Once you're not hurting, will you still do that? Is that was that really a soul calling of yours? Is it was that a sense like, hey, somebody's got to do that work. Somebody's got to get some shit on their hands, and I'm willing to do it because that's what that's my my skill. I can take I can tolerate that without throwing up on myself and get the work done that needs to be done. I mean, there's a there's a sacred calling to all work, and this when when the world starts to improve this is where we're going to have to find out whether or not what we've been doing is our sacred calling because a lot of the reason we're going to be doing what we do isn't to get paid as it is to be contributing I'm quite sure there'll be remuneration involved in it but in a world of no real want then the there has to be a reason to to keep the world moving and that re the real reason would be coming from your heart that there are jobs to be done who is best for the, for what needs to be done, and then we do it. I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that, but that's the simple part of it. Um, so uh, yes, please go uh, go to True Vision of Peace. I'm, like I said, I will put up a um, I will put up a link, and um, and see if if you can make the March seventh 
um, one online or the go to Rapid City, South Dakota for the March 21st one and there's another online one at March 28th um, basically a duplicate of the first one, a class limit of eighty, fifty dollars with the same um, the same schedule and the same backup. Um, yeah, the transition to an organ an organic commerce, and then another thing that has been missing from our lives as we just have industrialized, is art as part of as part of life. I mean, you know, more live music instead of watching. Um, Instead of watching sitcoms on TV, you have a local theater group that's part of your community that puts on entertainment all the time. I mean, you, I mean, just imagine instead of instead of I mean, imagine the equivalent of like Saturday Night Live or something like that, or even in the old soap operas were filmed live in front of live audiences. I mean, can you imagine a, a live. It doesn't even have to be filmed anymore. Can you imagine just an ongoing story like any series that g got enacted live sure the special effects would be different but but real actors I mean yeah and then real music you know you know like a band in the background it life would be so awesome like that um, and um, different uh, I guess I'm going now I'm going to get into just a little bit of the worldview because I mean true vision of peace is a is a world concept and um, just a little bits of news. I mean, you know, the BRICS nations um, are going to become very relevant. They are really kind of the arc that's that has been built, so that there's a place to go to that is involved in world commerce as the old commerce starts to fall. There, um, as the ambassador has mentioned in many of his talks, there are technologies that are available to do everything in a free world. Um, and that includes, you know, if not zero point technologies, technologies for making electricity either free or cheap um, and abundantly, most importantly. Um, there are, you know, technologies for cleaning up lakes and rivers and including the radiation. And, it, but none of, all of this stuff is part of the other world that is not based on weapons. It's based on commerce and and sh sharing. I mean, that's really commerce at its real organic levels is sharing. All the ability to share from point A to point B, and that's and you know that becomes it's like the circulatory system of the body delivering what needs to what organ. I mean, it's really that's what it is at the organic level. Um, and I, I mean, something came to me, even as I was thinking about this, is, you know, we, th we think um, about, you know, well, if we need to do this, why can't the Dragon family do this, or why can't the ambassador do that? In many ways, because of the Cabal, they're not free yet either. Uh, that's why there isn't this, this is sudden shift, because they're not free. There is a lunatic... Um, cabal running running around the planet with lots of weapons, and um, it is like the like the cancer. It is it the the circulation is being cut off so that it can wither, and so that this can be as peaceful as possible. And part of it also is the transition, the raising of consciousness, because there is shocks coming for people. Disclosure is going to rock the world when it happens. And the world religions are a big reason why disclosure has not happened. Um, you know, the leaders of these religions have been, you know, it, it all falls apart after this. So all of these things get really get taken into account, like how not to shock the world. But um, as consciousness rises, but then things have to shift really quickly because then they won't be shocks anymore. And I see things. I think things moving along quickly. I mean, I do see the um, the propaganda getting heavier and heavier. But I also see cracks in it. I see cracks everywhere um, in the news. So really, I, so the, you know, it's like the dragons are not free either. I mean, they they are sovereign, and I guess they have their security. But freedom, there. I mean, we're we're both held apart from each other by the cabal. Um, 
We understand, uh, to, you know, True Vision of Peace understands the mission to set humanity free despite appearances. Because sometimes it just seems like there's a, a lot of waiting. That's why there has to be patience, something that the ambassador has always spoken of and I, something that is, I have found enormously useful in my life. And, um, you know, we, we have a plan. We are executing. And, uh, there, you know, it would be, it's different when we realize, now we don't operate in secrecy, we operate in privacy. And because, and part of that privacy is because the, everybody's listening, the cabal is listening. So there's only so much of what we're, we would be planning that we would want certain people to just have free. Um, we do hold our meetings in uh, what I think are pretty in a pretty secure manner. Um, you know, that is to say, we don't use Skype. And um, so every we there is every um, intent and practice on our part. And of course, you know, the ambassador was part of security services, so you know we have good guidance there. But it's I mean, just as Sun Tzu said, all war is deception, and we're not at in, in a hot war with the cabal but you know again it's a battle it's a battle of wills it's a battle of um, who has the vision that people respond to um, and right now many people are respond are still responding and under the spell of the cabal and that's a spell that we are trying to dispel so that might be it I think 21 minutes is uh, not a bad one and um, I think that that will be it. I hope that was coherent. Um, still, I don't know if I'll ever get rid of the ums. Just, um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Before or else, I see the God within you. Be well. God bless.